Hey, everybody. Welcome. I'm Craig Havikhurst of WMOT Roots Radio in Nashville, uh, host of The String and music, music news producer. I'm honored today to have a conversation with uh, alligator recording artist Shamika Copeland and producer and co-writer on the record, Will Kimbrough. And welcome to you both. Uh, let me start uh, by turning it to Shamika to ask about how y'all's relationship got going. And I know you've worked on an album in the past, but when did you and Will uh, first meet and why did you decide to work together? Well, I've always been a fan of Will, but it was actually when I was recording a record with Oliver Wood and Will came into the studio to record on a couple songs. And, you know, I just, it was love at first sight. <laughs> I, you know, I fell in love with, you know, his whole personality and just everything about him. So. And what was the first substantive project you guys worked on? Outskirts of Love. And then what kind of, uh, how did you, was it a writing relationship first, right? You were co-writing songs. Was that the main, the main purpose of getting together? No, he was co-writing with John. John and him, they're the writers, you know. Um, I just listened to the songs and I'm like, okay, I love this. <laughs> That's, you know, what I do. <laughs> and they write well together. That's a match made in heaven. And then the three of us together is a dream team. So that's John Hahn, longtime uh, partner and friend of yours, Shamika. Uh, Will then tell me about working with John and then how that sort of translates. Is he like the Shamika whisperer and then the songs have to come to life in, in her hands. Um, is there a, a feeling, a process yet? Uh, how, how you worked it out in over several records? Well, I got to be part of that Outskirts of Love record, and so I saw how it was working. And, of course, Oliver Wood is somebody we all love, and so it just felt really good. And I saw the dynamic between Shamika and John, and I kind of, you know, understood what, what was going on. And so when I was asked to work on to produce America's Child, um, then... I think I felt comfortable with saying, yeah, I'd love to do this because I thought that Outskirts of Love was a fantastic record and it had uh, combined not just electric blues or Chicago blues or traditional blues or modern blues. It combined a lot of different things. We did an African feel on one of the songs and I got to play this crazy washboard guitar instrument and, um, and so I felt like it was an open-minded project. And this record, we wrote a lot because there just kept coming up things to write about. Well, then I almost don't even have to ask the segue question because you've set Shamika up perfectly to talk about the conception, how, uh, <laughs> what, 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 you know, and the fact that it was issues driven and the issues kept coming. Uh, so tell us, walk us through the story of Uncivil War. Yeah, I didn't even want to sing this song. I mean, I thought this song was way too beautiful for me to sing. I'm so grateful that I did. Who knew when we did this song end of last year that we would be in a situation that we're in right now. We were, it was based on what was going on at that time. The, so your prior album was quite topical. You were dealing with, you know, the world as it is, the world that's going to be for your son. Was there any question in your mind whether you would take on the next project with the same full force, looking at society, looking at politics, looking at our cultural life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, shoot, the older I get, uh, not only do I wanna speak my mind, but you know, I wanna put my hands on my hips and point my finger while I'm doing it. I really love that. I mean, there's nothing better than being able to use your voice to put the issues out there. Uh, and I love the way that we do it because it's not in your face, it's just more, here's what's happening so if the world ended and they found a you know found this record on civil war they would know what was going on in 2020. well then if the process involves shamika you hearing songs that will and john have written together and then you react to sort of a, a, a basically a first draft or a finished draft walk us through the process then john and i have been talking every day on the phone since i was eight years old and mm -hmm. um he was already into writing something similar to that because we were both pissed off about the same thing. <laughs> and we and that's how Money Makes You Ugly came about. He'll we'll just be thinking of things and he'll say, listen to this, and he'll call me up and he'll read it to me on my phone over the phone and go, What do you think about this? And I go, Oh, that's 
great. That's how it all starts. You know, this happens over months and, and years. Right, right. So he just know, intuits and knows. Um, and then, Will, can you describe the, the, the process with John? Are you more kind of leaning toward the, the musical side of these tunes? Uh, how much lyrics uh, are you providing? And, go ahead. I'm really coming in and, and, writing, and writing music and making the, the words be organized. We'll talk about the ideas. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly this uh, John mailed me or, or handed me one day like a pile of typed, typed paper. But, I, you know, and he would tell, he, you know, he would always tell me what was going on with, you know, my, uh, money makes you ugly. And, and, you know, Shamika and I talked about this or Uncivil War. That I get these words and they're really in a form that can be made musical without too much effort. Because for one thing, I've worked on two previous Shamika records. And part of it is like, what do, what do I as a fan want to hear coming out? And if I'm going to work on the record, what do I want to work on? You know, so when we did Uncivil War, I knew one of my favorite things that the band ever did was write the weight and hear it covered by Aretha with Dwayne Allman on slide or hear it covered by the Staple Singers. And so I thought, this kind of song could be really powerful. And so many songs on this record that I helped write came about because of these conversations we would have. And then John has this mind for these, you know, rhyming couplets, lyrics to songs. And so I get them and I'm trying to make them into these pieces that are going to musically be part of a record that will be a vehicle for Shamika to just, you know, soar over the top of and so that's the idea and that's the working process and as she said it's it's months or a year ahead of time there's this one or two songs that pop up and we're like well we think we want to do this song you know walk until i ride no one could tell if that's a 2020 song or a 60s message song we don't know but (laughs) right so that's what i love about that now if that if they found that one in the time capsule i think they'd be a little confused (laughs) yeah that's a high, that's high praise for a song. Um, <laughs> Shamika, then take us to the studio now for these for the, for the process. And you're in, in Nashville. I don't. I'm not sure where and who y'all brought in to work with. But just talk about the, the tracking and 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 what the what the vibe was like. Well, I mean, so it's it's at first it's just it's Will on guitar and Lex and Pete, and we're just in there. We're going through groups um trying to get the feel of the song um you know do we want it funky you know the tempo just all those types of things and like i said it just happens organically i hate to say that that because i don't want anyone to think that we don't work hard <laughs> because we do we work easy and we work easy together and that's what makes it it grand you know and um, I've worked with um, Pete and Lex before also on several records. So we all get together and it just works. That'll be Lex Price on bass, uh, Will, and, and Pete. Yep. Pete yep. Abbott. Pete Abbott on the drums. Pete Abbott. Brilliant. Do you guys have uh, a standout song personally for you that for some reason just rings your bell that you think you'll remember uh, 10 years from now? You know, the way the record starts, the Clotilda story was very personal for me. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Jason Isbell graciously came and played crazy burning lead guitar on this song. And so we got these two (laughs) Alabama boys on this song about this deep history that's really only being unearthed now, you know. Let's 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 back up and and yeah. uh Shamika, would you mind uh, just kind of giving us the back story of the Clotilda, what were why this spawned a song? When they found Clotilda a couple years ago, I was all about it because around that same time, I was finding out that I was from where pretty much where that ship came from, West Africa. I was excited about the story. I mean, it's it's a real sad story in a lot of ways, but culturally, you know, I want people to know that 60 years after slavery was abolished, they were still bringing slaves over. Um, and it's an issue that needs to be talked about and dealt with. The song is important, but the most important thing to me is we're still living with her ghost. And that filtered through John's head and became a co-write with Wills. John kind of did some research and, and he, wrote some lyrics that really, as Shamika said, we're still living with the ghost of this 
history and what could it be musically? And, and, and I think Shamika referred a minute ago to what, how we work in the studio. So there's these songs that have been sort of, I try to keep them pretty raw because I don't want to be stuck on ideas, but then the real changes come when we get in the studio because we don't live in the same cities and we don't have a million bucks to get together for two weeks and rehearse. We just get together and it starts happening. And that thing that Shamika said about how it doesn't feel like hard work, because once we've done the hard work, we're so happy getting to work with all these folks and then having Shamika's voice on top of it all. It's, I will never forget this, you know, right. it's just love and so much love in my heart for this project and all the people. Should ask about one more song because it's the finale of the record and uh, Shamika comes from your dad, from Johnny Clyde Copeland. You did Love Song. You've always recorded one of his songs on a record. Uh, why that one right now? Uh, my dad has a whole lot of great music, great songs. So, But I wanted to do something light. Uh, we had a, a few message songs in, in there. And, you know, after Apple Pie and a 45, I really wanted, <laughs> wanted to lighten things up a little bit with that. And I remember him writing that song and recording that song. Oh. We used to get together all the time, you know, every Sunday at my house, everybody would come over and eat up all the food and um, we would have a good time. Any other thoughts before we wrap up here about just the, the project as a whole, the, the role you hope that it takes in a very, fraught time in America. I mean, I, I would love for everybody to sit down and hear on Civil War. I'm honored and uh, grateful to work with Will Kimbrough at any moment. My only fear is that everybody else is going to want him and um, I'm going to have to go <laughs> outside, go out there with my baseball bat and beat them all away. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and of course, John Hahn, you know, well, that's a lifelong thing and I'm grateful for that. And I do, I, like you said, I want everybody to hear this record. It's a perfect record for 2020. Um, and I, I really want everybody to, to take time and listen. And since we're all stuck in the house, you know, we might, you know, you have plenty of time to do that. Uh, that's what I've been encouraging people to do. Sit at home, listen to good records. And with that, Thanks. we'll wrap up from Nashville.